Hey everybody, welcome to the Ramble Van Build Series where we're gonna turn this empty cargo van into a fully upfitted camper van that's built to take you on the adventure of your dreams. So we're gonna show you guys step-by-step step everything it takes to build the entire van using the Ramble Interior Kit by Infinity Vans, which includes all of the cabinetry, your electrical, plumbing, heating, ventilation, everything you need for your van. So this van's not gonna build itself and we've got a lot of work to do, so let's get building. Before we get started on the construction, there are two questions that you need to answer about your van. The first is, do you have the factory roof rails already mounted on the roof? And if you don't, you need to get those right away and get them installed because doing it later will create a lot of extra work that's totally unnecessary. We put a link in the description where you can purchase the factory roof rails and make that your first project on your van. The second thing is, do you have the factory air conditioner that comes with the passenger van? This build would be done a little bit differently if you're using the factory AC and you might have to do some modifications. So that's just something to consider before we get started. All right, here we go. Let's get into the very first stage of the build that any van goes through. There is a correct order of operations to build a van so that everything only needs to be done one time. So we're gonna start by cutting out everything on the exterior of the van. So our windows, our flares, our fan, skylight, shore power, everything that creates a hole in the van will be done now. And that gives us the opportunity to put in those pieces of equipment, leak test it, and find out early on if there's any leaks when they're really easy to fix. And then also we'll be able to clean up all the metal shavings really well one time so that the van doesn't rust. Here we are inside the van, ready to start. I want to introduce you guys to Chelsea. She and I are gonna be doing the build together. <laughs> hey guys. The first step is to mark out the skylight and the fan. And we are gonna use this marking jig, which comes with the Infinity Kit. And this is so the cutouts for the skylight and the fan line up perfectly with the panels when they go in. So we will start by holding this jig up and these screws uh, are going to go through the factory holes. In the Ramble, the skylight goes essentially right over the bed and that is in the second bay, if you will, from the back. So um, the ceiling ribs, if you count from the back, it does not go in the rear, it's just forward of that. And with the marking jig, you really can't get it wrong. Once it's mounted up, all you do is pop a drill bit through the hole. That will mark on the roof exactly where the exterior cutout needs to be. But I wanted to say before we get started here, it's a little daunting to start cutting holes in your van. So we do have some advice for you guys. The first being take your time, definitely measure twice, cut once. Always use the right tool for the job so that it's done as safely as possible. And then always wear safety gear. So when you're cutting hole or doing anything that's above your head, you definitely need to be putting glasses on. Also ear protection and hand protection is super important so that you don't get hurt doing your build. So here is the fan jig. On the Ramble kit, the fan goes in the second section back where the um, circular stamp out is. So this is a different jig than the skylight uh, because it's matching up with the distance between these two ribs. Once the screws are through, then you have your alignment. If it doesn't stay up by itself, um, which this one isn't, I'll hold it up while Chelsea drills out these four holes. Now we will head up to the roof, mark these lines and cut out the holes for the fan and the skylight. So I wanted to mention before you start, uh, put a piece of plywood down on the roof in order to spread the weight because if, you're, if you get up there and you have just pressure points, you can dent the roof. So we'll use a straight edge to draw a line between the four holes that we made with the cutting jig. You want to cut on the outside of the hole generally, you just don't want it to be too small so that you have to cut it again when the fan's going in. So taping off around the hole, it'll prevent it from scratching. After cutting out the hole, we'll use an angle grinder just to clean up the edges and then also square out the hole if the cut wasn't perfect. 
We're gonna apply some uh, Rust-Oleum to the edges uh, because now that those are just cut metal edges, they would rust if not protected. So make sure all the silver metal gets covered up. So the cutout for the fan is done. We're gonna do the exact same thing for the skylight. The next thing we're gonna do is cut out the holes for the two windows. So there's one here, one in the sliding door, and then both of the flare cutouts as well. Uh, something I like to do before we get going on that is to cover these holes with tape because as we're cutting here, it could get metal shavings down in there. It's just good practice to prevent those from getting in the cracks if possible. Cutting out the window, you just wanna trace this stamp out in the metal pretty much exactly. That's gonna give you the cutout that you need. Um, and then we'll put a trim over this at the end, but you do wanna make this cutout as clean as possible. So definitely take your time. We basically go through the same process. You're gonna cut it out, grind it, prime it, and then move on to the next one. And we're gonna get all the cutouts done before we install any equipment on the van. going to locate the shore power connection. The best place for this is in the second bay back, um, this triangular cutout here. And what we're looking for is the deepest part of this pocket. So you might not be able to see it, but this is more shallow here and this is shallow. So I want to have it as deep as possible because there's wires coming out of here. So it looks like, and then I'll, and then I'll center it in between this and we've done this enough times to know that it will come out in a good spot on the other side of the van. Okay, and then we'll just drill a pilot hole from the inside out so we know exactly where the center of that hole is. Here we've got the pilot hole for the shore power connection. What I'm gonna do now is tape all around this because when using a hole saw, I've definitely seen these catch and run before and it can scratch the exterior of the paint. So we're gonna protect it in case anything goes wrong. put the rust protectant on here. We're also gonna put the pilot holes for these four screws. Since those um, are cut out in the metal too, and this is an exterior component, we wanna have everything rust protected. So that's it, all of the metal cutouts are done. This is the perfect time right now to go through and clean up all of these little shavings because if you put this outside overnight, if there's any moisture at all, it will start rusting almost immediately. So we're gonna use some air pressure to clean off the entire top of the van as well as the inside. This is your solar um, roof port. So the solar panels plug directly into this. Uh, we need to install this now because we're gonna drop the wire through the roof and the other is just a wire gland. Um, we do expect this van to have some lights on the roof, and if you install this now, then you can pull wire through it without having to do your cutouts later. It's in the, the most forward section of the roof, 
uh, forward of the front rib. I'm gonna put the solar on the driver's side because the solar panel goes in front of the fan in this layout. And then the wire gland on the passenger side, basically um, equal to it. Uh, because when we run the lights, typically we'll go to uh, a spot above the sliding door and then the back door. And so this just kind of makes sense for us to put these two on the roof right here. We're gonna drill out a pilot hole from the inside so that when we mount the glands on the outside, we'll know exactly where they need to go. Now we have the pilot holes drilled through. Um, we'll drill out a larger hole to put the wires through and use one of these rubber grommets if you can. Uh, since you have wires coming through sheet metal, it is possible that they could uh, rub against the metal and get frayed. So we'll put these in as soon as the holes are drilled out and it's primed. And then uh, we'll install the solar port and the roof plant on the roof here and weather seal them. Now that we have all of our holes cut, we're gonna prep the surface for install of all of our components. First, we're gonna use alcohol to clean the surface, make sure we get all the dirt and debris off. Um, then we're gonna use a light sandpaper to gently scuff, and then we're gonna go ahead and clean again. gland also comes with um, a couple screws um, to secure it down to the vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and install those right now. To finish up um, our roof ports, we're gonna go ahead and use a little bit of lap sealant um, around the edges and the screw holes that we made in this guy, just to make sure everything's sealed and protected. Putting on the fan, the first thing we're going to do is put down a bead of waterproof adhesive and that will glue on this trim. So that's the first step. Next, we install this trim, which is what the fan mounts to. Super important that these uh, clips here are on the left and right side of the van, not the front and back. Can pre-drill the, the forward, back, and two side middle holes first um, and put the screws in. That just makes sure everything's aligned and then we can pre-drill the rest and sink the screws in. Uh, next, we're going to do a layer of lap sealant and cover up the screw heads and all of the seams on the outside of the fan. So the adhesive we just put in is really just the adhesive layer. Um, the lap sealant is what makes all of this waterproof. I like to do the lap sealant before the fan goes on so that it has a chance to dry and as you're setting the fan on, you're not making a mess. Again, we're going to lay down another bead of the flange sealant and uh, this will glue the trim to the top. There are no fasteners that hold the skylight in. It's actually done through a clamping system, which we're not gonna do right now. We're using clamps on the trim right here uh, now that we've put the adhesive down. And we'll, we'll let it sit probably overnight so that this actually is clamped in place. We're gonna lay down a Pretty hefty bead of window sealant here with a V-groove in it. What I usually do is I'll bring it up 
and then you'll set the shims here. I'll set the window on the shims. Now we're moving on to the flare. We do it the same way, but use the adhesive that comes with the flare, which is better for fiberglass to metal, whereas the adhesive for the window is glass to metal. Right now is absolutely the best time to clean up any of the sealant that might have spilled over when you push the flare on, or the window for that matter. So it gets progressively more difficult as time goes by. So definitely take a look around the window uh, and the flare and make sure that if you have any spillover, clean it up right now. Now we're installing the fan and you'll want to crank this out manually uh, because the attachment points kind of get tucked under this if it's collapsed. So do that and then also I take the wire out. Yeah, pull the wire out, send it through. How simple is that? Okay, next up is the skylight. Before you install the skylight, you'll want to add a generous bead of adhesive all the way around in the channel that's provided on the underside of the skylight. Make sure you add enough so that you get a little bit of adhesive squeeze out when you push the skylight down onto the frame. Now that the window is in, to get the best possible finish look, you'll want to use the OEM window seal, uh, which covers the cut edge uh, that we, you know, that we cut out in order to get the window in. the shore power connection to go in and this just goes in with four screws. I like to use the ones with the black heads because I think it looks the best. And uh, you don't want to over tighten it because then it could strip any of these uh, screws out. And it does have a gasket that should protect from any water getting behind it. So you really wanna do that until you see it just start to squeeze out. Now that the flare is in, we will put in the two CRL 1033 slider windows and we need to do this in, to be able to leak test it. Um, so there are a couple important things to consider. Now this uses um, an actual gasket in here so that it doesn't need to be glued in. But it's really important as it's going in that it's kept exactly in the center of this cutout. So as you can see right now, I'm setting it in there and it just kind of falls to the bottom. It needs to be really well centered as it goes on. Otherwise, it's definitely possible to get a leak. As I hold it center, Chelsea is gonna start screwing on the inside flange and the tip on that is to get it aligned and put each of the screws in with just one or two turns. Don't try to tighten down any of the screws until all of them are in. And then you'll go around in a circular pattern or a cross pattern just to make sure that it's going in evenly because it's kind of easy for it to get um, just kind of tweaked to one side unless you use that method. All right, time to leak test the van. We're just going to give it a thorough soaking.
we have a successful leak test, which means we are finished with phase one of this build. It's taken us two days to get to this point, and now we're ready to move on to phase two, where we'll prep the interior of the van, install the floor, walls, ceiling, and insulation. Make sure you guys are subscribed and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when the next video comes out. And if you want to build this van yourself, check the links in the description because all of the products are listed there. Thanks again for watching you guys and see you again next time.